That key concept should be listed in the essential question section. So again, bonds break and form during chemical reactions should be in the left-hand column of the Cornell note. And we're talking about how reactions occur, why they occur. So when you're changing a substance, you're changing something from one state into another state, you're either going to have to form a bond or you're going to have to break a bond. We're going to also learn where the reactants versus the products are in the reaction. Reactants tend to be on the left side. Products tend to be on the right side if it's a chemical equation with an arrow. But we're going to show you on a graph. We're going to show you how to decipher that. Because on the test on Monday, you're going to see an energy curve. And you're going to have to be able to tell whether or not that uh, reaction is released or whether its energy is absorbed. Okay, so reactants, the things that start the reaction are the things that go into, okay, they're like, they go into the reaction. They are the ones that are going to be adjusted or changed. And then the result, what we get from the reactants is what's called the product. Okay, so uh, the energy that is required in order to separate or break a bond <laughs> is called bond energy. So energy that goes in, you have a reaction, you break that bond, energy is going to be released when you do that. Uh, when bonds are broken or formed, that then is energy is being released. Okay, so energy is released and, and um, energy is gained or released based on the fact of whether the bond is broken or whether the bond is formed. So if a reaction is going at the same rate going to the, from the reactant on this side, because these are the reactants on the left side, to the products on the right side, if you see an equal amount, if it's at equilibrium as you see here, it's at the same rate. Okay, so the reaction then is therefore at equilibrium. All right, so the amount of energy needed to start a reaction. Okay, that energy hill represents the amount of energy that is required in order for this reaction to be carried out. Reactants are located here at the bottom of the hill. Okay, this again, the distance between here, the reactants, versus the top here of that hill is how much energy is required for that reaction to occur. Okay, so that is a very important concept. We see our arrow going in this direction here on the x-axis, and that's detailing the reaction direction in which way it's going. And energy on the y-axis is showing us the energy that is needed for that reaction as well. Okay, it's important that we differentiate between these two types of reactions, okay? Two types of major reactions that we're going to go over. Uh, but let's look at the graph first. So, again, we have our reactants here represented our products which is finished. Reactants start, products complete. Okay, so this arrow here, here represents the amount of energy needed for the reaction to occur. If you look at the dotted line there, you'll see that the products are here and that they're lower than the reactants. So, the difference in energy is lower on the products end than it is in the reactions end, and you can always tell when you see that graph in this manner that energy has been released okay so what that means is that reactants have a higher bond energy than products okay in this example for an exothermic reaction exothermic reactions release energy and release more energy than they absorb endothermic reactions which we're going to see in the next slide absorb more energy than they release all right, so let's analyze the difference between this graph because endothermic reactions, uh, they are going to, in the end, have more energy than they release. And the reason we can tell the difference is this. Look at the difference in bond energy, okay? So the reactants now is lower visually than the products. So if we ever see a graph like this and they don't tell us what it is, we know automatically that it's an endothermic reaction, okay? Because in this instance, the reactants have a lower bond energy. Look. Products is higher, reactants is lower. There's a lower bond energy in the product side than on the reaction side. So energy is absorbed more by the reaction to make up the difference. Okay, so endothermic reactions absorb more energy on the product side than on the reactant side.